Hi, I'm Amanda. And I'm Casey. And I'm Pedro. I'm Jason. And, and we're, we're going to talk, talk about, about constipation. constipation. Let's put it on the picture. So constipation is basically when a person has the impaired ability to evacuate their bowels. Um, another definition could be a slower than normal evacuation of their large intestine that results in increased water absorption from the feces and this can further lead to the bowels becoming impacted. Um, this occurs when a person has infrequent stools that are hard and dry and difficult to pass out of the body. For etiology for constipation, um, it can be due to not having enough fluids and fibers in the diet, um, not having decreased uh, physical mobility, so say a patient's just coming from surgery um, and they have a decreased lack of stimulation in their large intestine to pass the bowels, um, and then some people just ignoring the urge to defecate or they're so busy that they're like, oh, I don't need to use the bathroom, I'll, I'll be fine. Um, and there's also medical related problems that can cause constipation such as Parkinson's disease and multiple sclerosis. Some signs and symptoms you're gonna see with constipation could be abdominal distension, um, bloating, increased flatulence, increased rectal pressure. Uh, some people can get hemorrhoids, um, which is bleeding in the rectal area. And um, normally you're gonna see signs and symptoms in the clinical setting of a person having fewer than three stools per week, but this can vary because some people have different bowel patterns. Um, and then also people that are straining their bowels and having a difficult time trying to defecate. Some diagnostics with constipation, uh, you definitely want to do a physical health history for underlying causes. Um, you want to ask about their habit or pattern of defecation as well as their diet, if they're using laxatives, um, and any injuries that may have contributed to um, the constipation. When it comes to treatment of constipation, um, Besides diet and exercise and other collaborative measures, there's medications that can help treat constipation. These classes include chemical stimulants, bulk stimulants, lubricants, gastrointestinal stimulants, chloride channel activators, and intestinal secretagogue. My group members will further explain these medications. Chemical stimulants is one of the drugs used for constipation. It's used when a thorough evacuation of the intestines is needed. It starts working at the beginning of the small intestines and increases motility through the rest of the GI tract. It irritates the nerve plexus. Castor oil is the prototype of, for chemical stimulants, and it's not absorbed systemically. It's contraindicated in allergy, acute abdominal disorder, pregnancy, and magnesium laxatives can cause diarrhea in neonatal during lactation. Some adverse effects of chemical stimulants are diarrhea, abdominal cramping, and nausea. There's also dizziness, headache, weakness, which could be related to loss of fluid and electrolyte imbalance, sweating, palpations, flushing, and fainting. You can also get cathartic dependence, which is frequent laxative use or abuse, and the GI tract becomes dependent on stimulation of the laxative. Some nursing considerations of chemical stimulants are use the laxative as a temporary measure, administer oral form with a full glass of water, appropriate dietary measures, exercise and environmental controls, insert the rectal suppositories high into the rectum, teach the patient to retain the enema as long as possible, do not administer if the patient is having abdominal pain, nausea or vomiting, and monitor their bowel functions. <clears throat> Bulk forming laxatives, also known as mechanical stimulants, are another medication used to treat constipation. This type of medication is rapid acting, aggressive, and causes the fecal matter to increase in bulk. The prototype for this drug class is magnesium citrate. All of these medications are administered PO. Uh, some of the GI side effects are uh, diarrhea, abdominal cramping, and nausea. CNS effects are dizziness, headache, and weakness, and this may be related to the loss of fluids and electrolyte imbalances. Sweating, palpitations, flushing, and fainting may also be related to uh, the loss of fluid and electrolyte imbalances. Some of the nursing considerations for bulk forming laxatives are as you need to teach the patient that they need to take this medication with plenty of water. If not, the medication may swell into a gelatin-like mass and obstruct the esophagus. You also need to check what other medications the patient is taking. 
If the patient is taking other oral medications or vitamins, they should not take them. Should, they should not take them within 30 minutes of the bulk forming stimulant because it will increase the motility of the GI tract and possibly interfere with absorption. You, all, you should also check to see if the patient is taking non-depolarizing neuromuscular junction blockers. Um, there's an increased risk for neuromuscular blockage and they could, should closely be monitored with life support equipment readily available. Also, check contraindications which include allergy, acute abdominal disorders such as appendicitis, diverticulitis, and ulcerative colitis. You should also use these medications with caution with pa in patients with heart block, CAD, and pregnancy and lactation. Lubricants are used to make defecation easier without stimulating the movement of the GI tract. The prototype for this class of medications is mineral oil. These medications can be given by mouth or as a liquid suppository. Lubricants have the same adverse effects as bulk stimulants, but they are less likely to happen than in comparison to chemical or mechanical stimulants. As far as nursing considerations go, they are pretty standard in comp comparison to other medications. You'd want to check for any contraindications such as allergy, acute abdominal disorders such as appendicitis, diverticulitis, and ulcerative colitis. As a nurse, nurse, you should also use these medications with caution in patients with heart block, CAD, and during pregnancy or lactation. As you would for any medication, you should assess the patient prior to administering the medication so you have a baseline data which you can refer to in the future. This assessment may include skin, neurological status, pulse rate, bowel elimination patterns, and a full abdominal exam. Whenever you're administ administering a laxative, there are general nursing intervent interventions you need to consider. You should evaluate serum electrolyte levels before and during treatment. And you should also teach the patient that they can only use these medications as a temporary means to prevent bowel dependency. Gastrointestinal stimulants is another drug class used for constipation. They stimulate the parasympathetic activity in the GI tract to increase GI secretions and motility. It's indicated for rapid movement of GI contents. The prototype is metoclopramide, and it, the route is oral, IM, or IV. The contraindications are allergy and any GI obstruction or perforation, and it should be used in caution with pregnancy and lactation. Some of the most common side effects with gastrointestinal stimulants are nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and in intestinal spasm and cramping. Some other adverse effects that could happen are a drop in blood pressure and heart rate and weakness and fatigue. Some nursing considerations for gastrointestinal stimulants are administer these at least 15 minutes before each meal and at bedtime. Monitor the blood pressure carefully, especially if giving the drug through an IV. Monitor diabetic patients due to the increased speed of food moving through the GI tract, which could alter absorption and glucose level. Avoid alcohol or any other central nervous system depressants. Avoid driving and obtain assistance when ambulating if needed, and periodic monitoring and evaluation is needed. Here on this next slide, we have chloride channel activators. Prototype lubiprostone. This medication is administered orally, or PO. It is a locally acting agent that activates the chloride channels in the intestine and increases secretion of intestinal fluid that facilitates the passage of stool. It is used to treat chronic idiopathic constipation. Now, chronic idiopathic constipation is basically someone who has a reduced stool frequency less than three times per week or a person that has any type of difficulty passing stools regularly. For some people, this could be a normal habit or a baseline. And any changes to their baseline of, of a reduction of their movements will be considered constipation. Now, chronic idiopathic constipation is defined as the chronic presence of their aforementioned symptoms. It is called idiopathic because the cause of the constipation is unknown and is not caused by any type of underlying illness or medication. As nurses, we need to know the contraindications, which are GI obstruction, pregnancy, breastfeeding, abdominal pain, 
fecal impaction. Uh, we'll put a focus on abdominal pain. If we have a patient with some abdominal pain, do we really want to give this medication? We might want to try to figure out what's causing the abdominal pain. It could be uh, an underlying condition other than constipation. Continuing on, on lubiprostone, some of the adverse effects and the most common side effects of this medication are mild nausea, stomach pain, mild diarrhea, bloating, and headache. Some nursing considerations. We need to assess abdom for abdominal pain, any type of distension. We need to administer this medication with food and water. We need to uh, check frequently for the, and evaluate for a therapeutic response such as a decrease in constipation with a positive bowel movement. We also need to look out for the red flags and warning signs that this could be a more serious condition with manifestation, I'm sorry, manifestation markers that include uh, a sudden unexplained weight loss. Uh, someone over the age of 50 and just started having these symptoms that they, they didn't have prior in their life. A family history of bowel cancer or inflammatory bowel disease like ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. Uh, this A constipation that is not resolved or is not responsive to the treatment or any type of tarry black stools which can indicate uh, GI bleeding. The treatment of chronic idiopathic constipation can vary, but generally the treatment strategies employed by providers will begin with diet and lifestyle changes that the patient can easily incorporate into their daily routine. In the diet plan, the patient will be informed to increase dietary fiber and water intake and to take a healthy intake and balanced food products. On this slide, we have intestinal secretagogues. The prototype, lenaclotide. This medication is given orally, PO. The action of this medication increases the intestinal chloride and water secretions, accelerating transit and easing evacuation. Some of the contraindications of this medication is hypersensitivity, infection, and GI obstruction. As with anything else, we want to properly assess our patients for any type of obstructions, for any underlying conditions before administrating any uh, constipation medications. Some of the side effects we want to look out for lenaglotides are diarrhea, abdominal pain or discomfort, uh, gas, the passing of gas, bloating, and headache. Here we have some nursing considerations on lenaclotides. It can cause serious effects, including death for infants and children less than six years old. We need to determine the stool quality and frequency. Is it hard, is it loose, is it watery? We need to check for underlying conditions before administrating this medication. We want to advise the patient not to crush, chew, or break the medication, as this could reduce the effectiveness of the medication. We need to avoid uh, the, the use of this medication in pregnant women or women nursing their children uh, via breastfeeding. We need to assess for abdominal pain and any type of GI bleeding, as this can be a great concern of an underlying condition. Some other um, collaborative measures you can do besides medication treatment for constipation. Um, a big thing that a patient should be educated on is their diet. They want to have a high fiber diet that helps build up the bulk in their stool. Um, that helps also attract water. Um, a person should have 20 to 30 grams of fiber a day and they should gradually increase this amount over one to two weeks. 
Some examples could be raw vegetables, raw fruits, beans, breakfast cereals like bran or oatmeal, and a lot of people have been known to take prunes or prune juice. Um, another big thing to add in the person's diet and um, teaching as a nurse is to do two liters of fluid uh, per day for the patient. You want to encourage them to drink water and juices and definitely teach them about avoiding any caffeine, um, including coffee, tea, colas. Another uh, big thing about collaborative care with constipation is exercise. Um, helping the person be mobile um, helps move the bowels um, through the large intestine. Uh, so encourage the patient to do walking, swimming, biking at least three times per week. Um, teach them about the Valsalva maneuver, maneuver, which is about bearing down. So tell the patient to take a deep breath in, keep their mouth and nose closed for a few seconds, have them bear down, which is a feeling of tightening in their rectal area, and then tell them to breathe out. Um, another treatment option would be for the patient to have regular time to defecate, first thing in the morning or after the first meal of the day. Tell them not to delay their defecation. Um, this results in hard stools and decreases their urge to defecate. Um, tell them to keep a bowel em elimination pattern, which helps to assist in early identifying whether there's a problem or not. Also tell them to avoid the use of laxatives and enemas as this overuse will cause dependence um, for the patient and lead them to have bowel movements um, that aren't occurring and cause constipation.